What is up everyone, Nick here, and today we're once again going to be upgrading my 3D printed Iron Man suit. And the main focus of this video today is going to be on the hands. We are going to be completely redoing them, an overhaul from A to Z. There are two main reasons why I really want to upgrade the hands on my suit. Number one is comfort. These absolutely suck to wear. They are super painful. And number two is practicality. I want the switches to be easier to use and I also want the hands to be easier to put on. One of the main reasons why my gloves are so uncomfortable to put on in the first place is because I decided to take advantage of what Johan 3D Printmaster did with the gloves. He split the front and the back of the palm into two halves like this. So you have this front part and then this piece wraps around to the back, that's the back half. So when I originally saw this design, I thought this was perfect. I would put some elastics, I could put the glove on and as I put it on, they stretch apart. And once I have it on, it just clamshells back. But there are a few problems with this design choice. Number one, it's extremely uncomfortable to put on because both halves are like pinching my hand as it goes through because I made the hands exactly to my size and not slightly bigger. And on top of that, whenever I do a repulsor blast with my hand, this part tends to shift around. And not only does it look a little wonky, but the wires for my switches and for my repulsor will sometimes stick out of this edge, which is just not good. So in summary, bad, trash. I actually still need that to show you some examples, I'm sorry. And since the palms are so small to begin with, the elastics that hold the front half together and all of the fingers are extremely uncomfortable. They dig into my knuckles. Whenever I finish a convention and I take my gloves off, I have these deep bruises on the tops of my knuckles. It's just really not good. And this just goes to show that whenever you're building stuff, please test it under the most realistic conditions you possibly can. So let's use the glove as an example since, well, we're building a new glove. Not only am I going to take the 3D printed part and put it on, but I'm also going to put the glove that goes under my glove because this makes a world of a difference. You'd be surprised how much this changes how the fingers fit on the glove. And not only would I test out my fingers individually like this, but I would also put on the glove, I would put on the palm, I would put on the arm, and just see how all the parts collide. That's how I was able to scale this properly this time. Speaking of which, let me show you the steps I'm taking to make the new glove. I decide to use the exact same STL files that I originally used because I really like the palm that Johan 3D Printmaster used for his Mark 7 files. They're very slim, that way I can make them ever so slightly smaller because I don't want to have like big clunky gloves, I want them to be fairly form fitting. I decide to fuse both the front and the back together in mesh mixer and once I did that, I did a plain cut at the back of the glove, that way I can easily slip it on like that. Not only does it allow me to put the glove on more easily, it also allows me to tilt my wrist this way much, much more comfortably. Which, when you're wearing an Iron Man suit, is kind of, you know, important to be able to do that. <laughs> because on the original one, as you can see, not only is the wrist fairly flat, there's this giant chunk of plastic sticking out. So whenever I have the glove on, let's see if I can put this on. It's like stabbing me in the wrist. This sucks. So yeah, no, this was bad. This. Crash! I don't think I need it anymore. I think that can stay there. So with those modifications, the palm is basically ready to go. I just need to sand it and start attaching everything to it. Next up are the fingers. Now these fingers are part of Walsh 3D's No BS hand files. I'll leave a link in the description down below to those. And I really like his finger designs because each finger has like this little notch which goes into the next and it allows them to keep their alignment, which I really like. So when I printed the original gloves, I did the fingers at 100% scale and they fit me fine at first when I was wearing the finger like this. But whenever I put this and the palm on, the finger sits a little higher than it normally would and my fingertips would like dangle at the end of the fingers and it was really hard to like grab stuff and do whatever. And on top of that with the switches going down my fingers for the reed switches, my fingers were quite literally losing circulation. <laughs> so I made the fingers slightly wider on the x and y axis and I made them slightly shorter on the z axis. The last time I made the digits for my fingers, I used FDM printers to print them, which are 3D printers that use plastic filament, but this time around I use FDM printing to test the fit of my digits, and now that I know the scale that I need to print them at, I'm going to print the final ones on a resin printer. That way I don't have to spend days sanding these down. Because the last time I 3D printed these, I took my time and I just sanded the ever-loving crap out of them so I could get them as smooth as possible. With the resin printer though, there's going to be less sanding involved and it's gonna take less time to get them ready. So with that said, let's go sand the palms while the resin prints finish. Hand number one, hand number two. So, 
for sanding, we're gonna start with a palm sander at 120 grit. We're just gonna do as many of the flat surfaces as we can because there are quite a few details on this that we can't reach with our palm sander, namely all of these lines here. This is going to be difficult. This inner circle here is going to be like impossible to do with a palm sander, but the top, these side panels, and the back here is going to be fair game with a palm sander. So let's get started and see how much we can actually do with this. Just remember that whenever you're using a palm sander, you want to make circular motions and you don't want to stay in one spot too long or else you'll heat the plastic and you'll warp it, which is just no good. So let's see what we can do. A few moments later. So every once in a while, you're going to want to get rid of some of this buildup in your sandpaper and on your prints. So usually I just use like my pant leg or some sort of micro cloth and I just try and get rid of some of that dust. So now it's looking much, much better. And you're going to want to do the exact same thing for your 3D prints because as you can tell, this surface looks fairly smooth at first, but once you give it a quick rub, you'll start to see that some of those layer lines are showing back up. That's because there was dust building up in them. But this is starting to look pretty good. Usually when I sand apart, I like to stick to 120 grit for the vast majority of the sanding until there are practically no layer lines left. And then that's when I'll start working with 220 grit and some of those higher grits as I start making my print smoother and smoother. Same goes for my primer. I will only put primer on a print once I have sufficiently sanded it with 120 grit. Because if you put primer on too early, you're working against yourself because now you have to sand through your primer to get to those layer lines you're trying to get rid of. Sure, you can use filler primer to try to fill some of those layer lines in, but it's not gonna get everything. So you might as well spend your time with 120 grit as much as you can, get rid of the vast majority of those layer lines, then start using filler primer, then start using spot putty to get rid of that last like 2%. So I'm gonna keep working on this with 120 grit and I'll get back to you in a bit. <laughs> All right, I'm back. So before I finish sanding these with 120 grit, I wanna show you one quick tip. So when you're 3D printing a part at a really steep angle, you will start to see an effect called stair stepping where each layer progressively starts stacking on top of each other like steps to a staircase. And those are a little tricky to get rid of with just regular sandpaper and some filler. So here's a trick you can do with an orbital sander. This is literally my version of don't cross the streams, but cross the streams. So what you're going to do with the parts that have steps to them, you are going to spend a little bit more time than usual sanding them until the plastic starts to get hot. And as the plastic gets hot, it'll start to fuse those steps together, creating an even transition across them. So you can see I already started doing it on this part. So this is starting to look pretty good. So this would kind of be an example of what I'm talking about, where you can see each progressive step of the 3D print. So I just got done sanding everything with 120 grit sandpaper. It's starting to look pretty good. So I'm going to wet sand this with 220 grit sandpaper, and then we're gonna put the primer on. I really hope that you guys can hear me good with this on because the fumes are pretty gnarly in here. I've been working on this thing for so long, my hair has decided to go back into my skull. Just kidding, I got a haircut. So let me show you what we got. So if we look down here, we can see there are a bunch of parts that are all primered up. Basically all of these are ready for paint. I have both of the front hand guards, the rear of the hand guards, both hands, and all the fingers are done. Everything is ready to go. I've been using this Duplicolor filler primer. It's absolutely fantastic. I did a few heavy coats on all the parts then smoothed it back down So there are practically no defects left on any of the parts and now everything is ready for paint essentially So we're going to be using the exact same paint I've been using for the entirety of this suit This is rust-oleum metallic oil rubbed bronze. This stuff is absolutely gorgeous So I'm gonna shake this up real quick uh, the instructions say to do uh, light to medium coats every several minutes So that's exactly what I'm gonna do for the best effect And then we're gonna let all of this sit for a few days and then we're gonna do the clear coat And we're back so it's been like over a week I haven't had the chance to come in here and check out the parts So at least we know for a fact that the paints and the clear coats are super super dry So we're not gonna have any issues with that next up. We're gonna be taking all these parts 
We're gonna bring them inside and we're gonna try to figure out what we're gonna do with all these, how we're gonna assemble them. The fingers, I know exactly what we're gonna do. The hands and the hand plates, that's gonna get a little bit trickier, but we'll see in just a second. So we're finally back inside. It's been a few days, sorry to break the immersion. Now we're finally gonna start putting all the parts together. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do it for the glove, so we're gonna start with the fingers first. For the fingers, there's not a lot to it. It's a quarter inch thick elastic that is gluing all the individual digits together into one finger. So we're basically gonna replicate that process I did for my own gloves. But I do have a little trick I wanna share with you guys. Basically, I'm reusing the dowels I used for painting. Basically, I stick all the digits onto this wooden dowel with hot glue. That's how I was able to do all the painting without losing the fingers, without them falling over or anything. And the reason I'm reusing this wooden dowel with the glue on it is because hot glue does not like super glue all that much. It will glue a little bit, but it doesn't like it nearly as much as skin. So to save our fingers, we're gonna use this dowel to apply pressure onto the elastic to glue it onto the digits. My camera cut out a bit ago for some reason, but I already started the process of gluing the digits onto the elastic. So let's keep doing that right now. All right, so we have the tip of our finger right here. Um, this, if I'm not mistaken, is the second one that's gonna go here. And this is gonna be the base of the index right here. So, I'm gonna apply a little bit of super glue inside of this. Now we're gonna slide the elastic inside of this, making sure it's in the correct orientation. And then we're gonna overlap these two parts right there. So we don't want any tension in the elastic when we're doing this. We just start lightly tapping it until it starts gluing. And then once it starts gluing, we can really start applying pressure. Yeah, that should be good. Now we got a digit. Okay, let's do the last piece. So, same idea, we're gonna apply a little bit of super glue in there. Then we're gonna slide the elastic right on through, just like that. These pieces need to overlap like so. Then bring in that dowel, start lightly tapping it into place. There we go. Finally starting to get a handle on this technique. It's been a while. And there you have it, that's one digit done. We still have quite a bit of elastic to go. I'm probably gonna cut it like yay here and glue the rest in the glove. But yeah, that's a digit. Now we have to do that, what, nine more times? <laughs> 28 digits later and I finally have all the fingers done. Now we have to glue these to the gloves. One mistake I made with the first pair of gloves I built is there was too much elastic and too much glue inside the glove and all of that was bulging into my hand and making it super uncomfortable. So we're gonna keep it to the bare minimum for the elastics inside the glove as well as the glue. And these elastics don't tend to get unglued so I don't think that's gonna be an issue. So let's do that right now. I should really not do that. These are brand new. <laughs> Where'd the other one go? Honestly, there's no real good way for me to show you guys what I'm doing right now. It's a lot of guesswork. I'm just trimming the end of this elastic here, centering it with the center of the knuckle and then gluing it down. Not necessarily as close to the edge as possible because I want to keep it elastic yet. I don't want it to rip apart from the glue. So I'll leave a slight gap where there's no glue. All right, so after a few minutes of messing around with some buttons inside of my glove, I think I came up with a pretty good solution. Basically, I placed the buns right above my knuckles of my index and my middle finger. With the buns being on the top of my hand, this means I can close my hand without accidentally triggering the buns, but if I move my fingers back, I can have really good control over which buttons I'm pressing. So I can do the index, or I can do the middle finger. And the activation of each button is super consistent, so I'm not accidentally triggering them, nor am I triggering more than one at a time, unless I want to. So index, middle, index, middle, middle, index. So with that said, we can finally start soldering the switches together and gluing them in place. So I just got done soldering the switches and gluing them into the gloves. And I gotta say, I'm really proud of the job I did. They work absolutely fantastic. They're tactile. I don't accidentally trigger them like I used to do with the reed switches. The only downside is it's a little uncomfortable having the switches right against my knuckles, but it's totally worth it because the control I have over the buttons is just absolutely amazing. Now that the switches are done, we have to figure out what we're gonna do about the NeoPixel. And for the last pair of gloves I built, I kind of just glued them in place with a little bit of hot glue and some sticky foam. It wasn't the best solution. So I went back into Tinkercad again and I designed these. Basically, they're little 3D printed mounts that hold a NeoPixel in place. 
place. So you have a hole in the back for the wiring. You have two tiny holes for motor screws so you can screw the NeoPixel into place. And this outer ring here is a press fit for an acrylic disc. If I haven't done it already, I'll be releasing files at the same time that I post this video of these mounts. I'll include a version for just the NeoPixel, a version with this outer ring for the acrylic, and two other versions with these mounts. Basically, you can glue these into place, and then you can screw the mount into place. So this doesn't have to be glued in place, but you can have this glued in place instead. So you can easily swap out your NeoPixels. And not only did I go through the trouble of designing these mounts, I made sure that they are a perfect press fit for the inside of my gloves so I don't need any glue. So I finally got done assembling one of the gloves. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna assemble the other one. Very quickly, I added a buckle at the end of an elastic strap that attaches to the glove. This is going to snap onto the forearm and this is gonna keep my hand from sliding off. Plus when it's on the armor stand, it keeps the hand on. That was by far the easiest step. So now I'm gonna show you how I did the hand plate. Basically I added three elastic bungees to each side of the hand guard. Now I'm gonna add some extra craft foam here to keep it a little bit more stable and some extra craft foam here so I can glue it onto the glove. And once it's glued on, we're basically going to be done. And just like that, both gloves are now done. So I'll just try this on real quick. Way easier to put on than my last pair, oh my lord. There we go. So we have the hand plate right here and thanks to the elastics, I can actually bend my wrist to do repulsor blasts. And with that being said, I'm gonna put on the back and I'm gonna try out those switches and the gloves and see how well they work. Okay, so I somehow managed to put all of this on myself. So I have the back attached to my harness and I also have the arm all hooked up. I plugged in the wires. The only thing that's left to do is to plug in the power source, which is in my pocket. So without further ado, Please work, please work, please work. Yes, okay, nice. There we go. <laughs> awesome, so the lasers work, repulsor works. I'm assuming the ailerons also have power, so let's find out. Yes, let's go. I'm just having a blast right now. <laughs> All right, there we go, lasers through the smoke. I have no idea if you guys can see that. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Awesome. This is so uncomfortable. It's so lopsided because I only have one arm, so it's pulling on my back this way, so I constantly have to readjust. I feel like Quasimodo. One more time. One more time. Oh, now it's really smoking. Nice. I hope this is as cool as it is for me. <laughs> and let's hit it with the lasers. Oh yeah, pretty sweet. Awesome, so everything works exactly as I wanted it to. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something from this video. If you guys have any ideas for future videos, please drop them in the comments down below. And you can also check out the links in the description. I have an Amazon shopping cart with tools and materials that I use to build these sorts of things. I also have a link to my Kofi where you can make a donation to support me. And that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Get lasered, get lasered. Dope. <laughs>